Hello. Hi. Thanks for joining. Um, there's so many of you, and I've been kind of following. Oh, my hair's got stuck. Been kind of following the chat, and uh, I love the Bible verse sharing. That is very sweet. So that's awesome. Um, there's also a lot of you from several countries, but I was seeing a lot of people from Brazil. So that is so fun. Thanks for tuning in. Um, we just kind of wanted to get on here and chat and see if you guys have any questions for us. We know that with the holidays coming up, uh, things get a little crazy out there. So before everybody's schedules get completely insane, we wanted to hop on here. Um, I do. Oh, all of the people. I have my coffee. Katie. The, okay. So Katie's joining in a second. Our coffee mugs are empty. <gasps> there is the French Yay! press. Here's what happened is <laughs> I ran out of coffee filters for pour overs this and didn't realize it until it was too late. So they have been ordered, but French press just takes a minute. So we now have coffee. Oh, so pumped. Um, I did just see a question. Are we going to, okay, Victoria Smith, any chance you will do another YouTube live of your Christmas concert? We are doing a Christmas concert live. Um, it's on Crowdcast. So there's tickets available for that. We're not posting it um, to YouTube, but we are doing a live concert. And, uh, well, it's not technically live. We recorded it on December 3rd. So just like our YouTube videos where it's all recorded live in the moment like we're not ever lip syncing or doing any of that in this video it's actually us playing live but we just have to format it differently so we can actually show it to all of you lovely people so we recorded it on december 3rd and um it will be shown on the 20th so sunday so if you guys want to tune into that um i can post a link to that down below after the chat uh any other Sandra Brent says, Furrow says coffee mugs are basically like movie props in front of you. That is true, Brent. <laughs> Soon they will not just be props, though. Sandra says, don't fall asleep. Thank you, Sandra. Sandra's we our friend from Finland. In just a moment. I do have to say, I don't know how much coffee yeah. you guys have had today. This is my fourth cup. It's 10 30. <laughs> but I went out to breakfast with a dear friend of mine from. Oh, so um, I know this is why I'm <laughs> like, like so late. I arrived like ready to go today. Uh, I had a lovely cup of coffee with my husband this morning and we did our little Advent devotions together, which was very fun. And then um, we went out to breakfast with some old friends of ours. So then I had three more cups of coffee while I was at the breakfast table. Oh, no, two more. So this is my fourth cup. Well, Katie just got two dollars for her smile. Thank you, William. <laughs> Aw, thanks, William. That's the Katie best. smile That's big for your two dollars. <laughs> I'll smile maker. bigger right after. <laughs> yeah, more smiles after coffee. Um. Oh, hi, Terry from Ireland. We love Ireland, and we have a lot of good friends there. So, fourth switch and lover fourth cup. That sounds like Scandinavian levels of coffee consumption. That is a hundred percent true. So. When we went to Finland, I think that's one of the, Sandra can laugh about this. We always like go way out of our way to make sure there's like coffee available to us. Um, and Finnish people drink more coffee than us. That's the first time we've ever like experienced them actually appreciating and understanding. So, uh, Stefan, thank you so much for uh, the keep it up with the weights. Epic workout little gif. Jonathan says, is Katie single? Because she can fiddle my heart any day. <laughs> oh my God. Katie, where'd you go? Katie, come back. Jonathan's going to- We're making money because of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I almost just poured my portion into the cream cup. That's basically <laughs> the right way to do it. I know I'm going to spill this no. since people are watching. Since college, I've learned to like coffee black. So that's There's my There's a thing. song about that. Big flex in this world. Oh, I'll take more. You want more? Yeah. Okay. I was being nice um, oh, hi, Zach McNabb. Good to see you. Um, May Nerd says, any plans on coming to upstate New York? Not currently. Um, we're always down for concert suggestions. If you guys have a venue or you know someone with a venue that would love to bring the Petersons, you can email info. I will give this to you. Somebody else talk. She's, I'm typing. You type it wrong. Uh, I'm <sighs> More coffee. Um, yeah. First semester of college, I saw a question asking about that. Was 
phenomenal. Um, <laughs> and it was very fun. Did a lot of studying, not much sleeping. That's mm -hmm. true. Came home a lot of weekends to do video shoots. So Julian would good. text me at like 12 or 1 in the morning. Be like, what you doing? Or try to FaceTime me. I'm like, it's 1 in the morning. <laughs> Julian, I don't know if you guys saw our last Instagram post, but Julian also became very, not last, and his birthday was last. The one before that, Julian fell in love with Waffle House. Oh. So I, Jules and I went to Waffle House when we were in Amarillo doing a show. So They called it Waffle Home. Oh, yeah. Mm. Not a house. Uh, it's one of the few places open in the small college town that I go to oh. past 8 p.m. So <laughs> that's part of it, but also just the atmosphere is incredible. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the same. Harry Gunter, your Christmas card arrived from Germany. So, so glad I made it. Thank you. Um, where is Matt? So, fun story. We are headed to Grapevine, Texas, yeah. early, early tomorrow morning to do a couple shows. Um, we have a show Saturday night and a show Sunday afternoon. And they're sold out at the venue's capacity. So, that's really fun. Um, and Matt is going to pick up the van that we travel in. So that's where Matt's doing. So he's currently picking van up van. exchanging. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the correct word is. Oh my gosh. Yes. Oh, Whoa. I don't, how do you say that? Venetius? Oh, also Maxine. Yeah, big fan from Brazil. Oh, thank you. Hi. Maxine. Oh, Maxine. thanks Maxine. Hey Maxine, yes. hi guys. Very kind. Um, Waffle House, AKA the Greasy Spoon. Thank you, Andy oh. Moss. <laughs> Andy Moss, what's up? <laughs> I will say though we were running late for obviously because this is what we do that morning that Jules and I ate at Waffle House and Jules and I are like finishing our meal already ready like asking for the check and dad walks in to make his order and I was like dad we have to leave in like five minutes so he announces to Waffle House I got five minutes he sat down at a table magically a waffle appeared and a cup of coffee and he was out he was out before Jules and I were yeah. like they brought him the check with his waffle and he was done. And Jules and I were like, like shout out to the Amarillo Waffle House because dad was in that. He made so that happen. Funny. Dad made it happen. I don't know. When the two became one with John and Karen, our parents, <sighs> dad got the Karen as well. The power of it. <laughs> um, Thomas. Thomas Ryan oh. the fourth. When is Katie getting the married fourth. to the flat guitar guy? Flat I don't, I don't know, know any flat, flat guitar, guitar guys. Guy. <laughs> Maybe he means a guy who plays the guitar who's flat. Like oh. the guitar is flat or the person the is person flat? The person is definitely flat. I've heard of flat Stanleys, but I haven't heard of a flat guitar. Uh -huh. Well, Katie, answer the question. <laughs> when are you marrying a flat person? Uh, Katie, you're making us money right now. <laughs> the longer I think about it... <laughs> Any tips for playing tremolo on mandolin from Homegrown Music, New Jersey? NJ. Um, drink too much coffee? Drink a I'm lot just... of coffee. <laughs> I don't know. Jules, after staying up all night, is literally an expert at tremolo. I don't know. Um, honestly, next time Karen gets on the live, she has very interesting like technical explanations for mandolin thingies. As some of you know, yes. mostly our patrons. Mom used to be our mandolin player. So mom was the OG Peterson mandolinist. Mm -hmm. Original gangster. Yes. Is that what that means? For? Yeah. Original gangster? That's yeah. Karen. I thought it OG just meant original. What have you that been saying OG about? I've only said it about a couple of things, but I said it about my outfit a couple of days ago. <laughs> he has the original gangster outfit. <laughs> we now need to see this outfit. <laughs> we need to see what Katie's OG outfit is. That's so dumb. Oh, oh, thank you, George. You guys are very cute. Oh, thanks. So Georgia, Europe. That's, That's awesome. awesome. In Europe? Or... Hello, oh, what kind of yes. church are you going to? Oh, we love our church. We're actually, um, we've changed like the denomination of church we've gone to a lot through the years, just moving around in the Air Force. I wouldn't say we're like a certain type of church specifically, but currently... We go to the First Baptist Church in Branson, and we love it. And Katie's on the worship team a lot of Sundays. And half of them on Christmas Eve. We have a show on Christmas Eve, and our church is doing four services, so everybody can go and spread out and all that stuff. And I'm going to run from the show and do the last two. And then we're all going to watch a Christmas movie. Oh, Dad's on. 
They Wait, love Waffle House. They are the fastest. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are. Um, <laughs> Chance Rogers. Ah, only okay. Chance is on there. I use OG to mean original too. I think it basically means the same thing, right? That's right. Maybe it does. Chance and I have an understanding. <laughs> um, we both celebrated 30 years. Maybe 30 year old Lincoln means i'm thinking OG if you were born way. in 90 it evolves at different rates <laughs> he was also at our show yesterday he was matt's one fan it was uh-huh. very nice oh, oh thank, thank you monty. monty good to see you did matt get grounded for exposing himself mom and i Not actually had a chat about grounded this. can we give some background story before i just oh, laugh and say that um so we released joy to the world which is a really fun song we actually already had a Joy to the World up on YouTube of just the four of us kids hanging out in the living room at my parents' house, but we redid it with the full band. The OG. The OG. Um, <laughs> anywho. Um, oh, it's that's different. Okay. <laughs> Where was I going? Oh, at the end of Joy to the World, we caroled to our photographer, Aaron Clark, and then... Um, None of, okay, other thing. None of us knew that Matt had unbuttoned his little top button of his flannel until I proof watched the video afterwards. And I was like, this is ridiculous. So anyways, uh, Karen was not pleased that Matt did that. So if anybody else out there did not like the ending of that, you're on our mom's side. So we had a good chat. It's all in good fun. Yeah. Okay. Like, I love it's a lot of people. Currency. We just don't think. Costa Rican coffee is one of my absolute favorites. So, Fernando, I totally agree. And I would love to go to Costa Rica and mm-hmm. do coffee. And thank you being transformed by, like, the little Jif. Oh, it's a party. Oh, look at him. <laughs> Jif or Gif? Oh, oh don't just start that. Okay. I've um, debated that recently, too. That's her first date question. Um, <sighs> Fake Christmas movie. movie. What's your spiritual gif? <laughs> okay, Jonathan. <laughs> My favorite Christmas movie is Chevy Chase's Christmas Vacation. Is it Chubby? Chubby um, Chase. Yeah, <laughs> is that what you said? The story of COVID. <laughs> I love that movie so much. I've already watched it twice this year. She has. Mm, it's a great one. Um, what do you like? <laughs> <laughs> you gonna copy or you gonna? I'm gonna mind. consider. Yeah. Um. Well, I will say I love tradition and. On Christmas Eve, every year for as long as I can remember, we watched It's a Wonderful Life, and I love that movie. I also really like the Santa Claus with Tim Allen. I think it's hilarious. And yeah. Well, I know what your favorite Christmas movie is. I do like those two as well. I also like White Christmas, and um, I love Home Alone. (laughs) (laughs) Jillian's dream is sabotaging people, so... Mm -hmm. Uh, um, Seagrave73 says, did you assist foxes and fossils with their Patreon? Your sites are very similar. Uh, foxes and fossils are super talented. We don't know them personally, but they have great content. Um, we didn't I did not even know they had a Patreon, so I did not. Uh, but I will say when I created our Patreon, something I did was I looked at other people's Patreon pages to see like, hey, what's realistic for doing so? Maybe they found us and looked at it. Maybe they just came up i mean there's only so much music artists can do to offer things. i will say i've been getting a lot of messages from new patrons that we have that said that they just joined and they're supporting two groups us and foxes and fossils oh fine i didn't know if they yeah but i didn't know till then that they had a patreon page yeah a lot of people that like their music like our music too so david guitar madman twenty dollars oh thank you oh thank you that's super sweet uh, okay, other questions. Um, does your pla- dad play any shows anymore? Does our plaid? Does our dad, um, Dave125? He does. He plays in our gospel show currently. He's a fantastic piano player mm-hmm. and guitar player and saxophone player. He'll be coming with us to Grapevine. Mm-hmm. And we're working on, in 2021, there will be a video that we put out. With dad. with dad playing the piano, Yay. and he is a beast at the piano, so that will happen. Um, here's a question for Katie from Kayla Pop Fiddle. Classical violin, bluegrass. Um, so <laughs> the rhythm thing at the frog. Basically, it's I mean it is the same instrument, and so I would say the biggest thing to do for transitioning from classical style to fiddle style is just 
song selection and listening to fiddle players um, because it's definitely a style thing. So a lot of listening. And I mean, yeah, a lot of a lot of students that I teach, that's what they've wanted to do is switch from classical to fiddle. And so we pick fiddle tunes and kind of talk about here's how we incorporate the style. And maybe um, I mean, in fiddle playing, you do a lot of two strings at once instead of one. So anyhow, so on and so forth. But, OK, Ellen's highlighted question. Oh. Yes, Fernando, I did think the $25,000 or $2,500 for US dollars. And Katie and I both had a. I, I about passed Katie out. Katie went off camera like, would, for a couple yeah. seconds. Um, I did see another question about um, are we going to play in Colorado? I can't find it. Dang it. Um, Elevation Festival was canceled and they were bummed. It was canceled in 2020, but they're shooting for it again in 2021. So we are booked to play the 2021 Elevation Festival in Colorado, so. Come see us, come see us. Timothy <laughs> Arnold. Bear checks, for bear bar. checks, bear no, checks. No, that would actually have to be $2,500. <laughs> no. Don't, no. don't no. kiss them. They no. will raise, um, they do that. Bear tracks is the best. Robert come Hardy, see. I would get every cent. Um, Robert Hardy, $25. <laughs> Merry Christmas. This lol, I have Santa train stuck in my head. He said to help. I have said, um, oh. okay. <laughs> oh, that makes more sense than the last. Like, okay, no laughing matter. <laughs> Santa train does get stuck in your head. And we were actually laughing with Aaron Clark, who does our videos. Um, and apparently, his kids love what were the songs on the album? They make him play Christmas Santa train and Christmas, Christmas times to come in all the time. <laughs> so, Aaron just gets to be blessed by those songs. Multiple times a day, so you're welcome. The lyrics on Santa Train are so hard for me. It, you, all you have to sing is ooh. Are they? Is it reconnecting? What? The cube. Oh, I'm just assuming um, it's still live. Yeah, Meister. Uh oh, thanks. Thank you. Cool. I love the headband, guys. Yeah. Um. Oh, thank you, thank Ethan. You. Ah. Oh, and Judas. Just want to wish you all a merry, merry Christmas from Sweden. Thank, thank you. you. We actually, we just got some, our neighbors who used to live across the street from my parents in Branson are from Sweden and they gave us chocolates that said they're, it's sweet, mm -hmm. sweet. How is it? It's like a play on the word sweet and sweet. So oh, yeah, yeah, they're yeah. awesome. So thank you for that. You ABBA Piano Guy, thank you for the music. Love your arrangements. Jerry Gann, oh, thanks for all you do. Thank you, Jerry. Good thank to see you. you. Yes. Uh, step up the mountains to Utah. Thank you. Utah would be fun. At which age did you start to play your instruments? Um, we all started taking piano at seven, and then I started banjo at twelve. Julian started mandolin at I think thirteen. Thirteen. Mm -hmm. But she'd taken fiddle since, since she was like five yeah. or something. Four, yeah. Katie started violin at nine, but then bluegrass at fourteen. Thirteen. Thirteen. Fourteen. Yeah. So thirteen. As children of Karen, well, I love that title. Um, do y'all study music theory? No. Katie knows music theory pretty well. And Emmett is really good at figuring out like chord structures and what notes. He are can he has theory like in his head, common sense wise. And uh, mom is really, really good at theory. I've had to take a lot of theory through piano lessons in the years, but that's about it. Uh, Benjamin says, how did we meet Aaron? And that's a good question. So Aaron actually goes to our church, mm -hmm. but I just love following different photographers in the Branson area. And I loved that his pictures all looked really natural, like not Photoshopped, not enhanced, just like I could really tell that that was the person. And we needed a photo shoot for our album, Shenandoah. Mm -hmm. And so I just reached out of the blue and contacted Aaron. So he took a couple rounds of band pictures. And then he mentioned wanting to get into videography. And so he and that's like right when we were starting. Yeah. And we yeah. had just started talking about a YouTube channel. So we both kind of like he grew in his like videography skills and we grew as musicians and YouTube people at the same time. So it worked out really, really well. I also played at his wedding back in the day, um, and his it, wife yeah. used to be our youth group assistant. So bless her. Yeah, Carolyn. Yeah. Awesome. So that is how. Um, I saw a question: Did we ever think our YouTube channel would get this big? No, we're just like really along for the ride. A lot of people say 
what are your dreams and aspirations? And we just want to keep glorifying God with our music and encouraging people and bringing people hope Mm -hmm. and having fun playing music together as a family. So we don't have this big, we must reach X amount of whatever. We're just, we love what we do. So and YouTube, I mean, has been huge in letting us, especially this year, do what we love and get our music actually out there because we're not a band that we don't, you know, we don't have record deals and we don't do the whole radio time thing. And so YouTube has been a huge way to actually get our music widespread. And I was going to say thanks to YouTube. So we released our Christmas album and it debuted as number three on the Billboard Bluegrass charts. And um, I checked and then the next week it was number nine and then went back up to number eight. Every other single album on there is by a record label. They have like a professional team promoting this stuff. We don't have anything like it is just us playing our music and telling you guys about it. So you guys literally put our album on the Billboard Bluegrass charts, which is absolutely ridiculous. So thank you. That's yeah. Super crazy. Um, This is Seagrave. First of all, thank you. Thank you. Um, Have you heard of the group Solos? I don't. I have not. Actually, no. We will have to. Uh Winnie Horan is their fiddler. Watch their YouTube video. This is Dennis, new patron. Oh, Dennis. Yay. I just messaged him yesterday. Yeah. Oh, cool. Super excited. Can we give a shout out to Brazil? Oh, yes. Andre with Brazil. Shout out Hello, to Brazil. Brazil. <laughs> I so wish I we spoke Portuguese, but we did I know. Not. Katie can speak so Spanish, nice. but it does me no good. Well, the Petersons yeah. play in Arizona. I hope so. That'd be fun. That would be awesome, especially in January. <laughs> Finally, I'm seeing you live. Oh, welcome, Zachary. Thank Glad you. it worked out. Oh, okay, more questions. How are you guys doing in COVID? It was one that disappeared. Um, I mean, <laughs> as good as we can be, really. Yeah. I mean, about the same as everybody else, probably. I'm very thankful for the online community, for sure. Yes. We're still able to work every day of our lives. Oh, yes. So. Papa Doc 1000 got two tickets to our Wilson, North Carolina yeah. concert. Yay. April 16th, we're in Wilson, North Carolina. So Be sure to clap time. for the fiddle breaks. I heard that that's what you're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, try trying to start playing music with family, two daughters. How did your parents start playing music with you? How did they make it fun? <laughs> How often did they play with you as a family together? Um, I mean, our parents were singing with us ever since we were really small and they would come in every night to sing us all to sleep. And we had certain songs that we all knew together and we'd sing for fun. And they'd like, I mean, whether it was a round song where everybody has their own part and you can combine it all together, or told a story, we really enjoyed that. And then as far as bluegrass goes, um, dad had found these books, these abandon a book. Yeah, I think is what it was called. And they all had the same songs for different instruments. And so we could all learn those and play them together. So a lot of that. And a huge part of that, too, is like getting involved in a community of musicians who are playing the same style and also have some folks your age. Because when we met other kids our age that were also playing, it made it really fun. So community is huge. Um, I don't know how to say any of this, but it says 610. Thank you. <laughs> It's in signs, yeah. symbols. Yeah. I don't Drake's know how to English pronounce. Maybe Japan. Maybe Japan. Oh, I, I don't want to get it wrong. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't even know how to. Yeah, but thank but you. Thank you. Um, smash the like button. Thank you, Wayne. You can smash it. You can smash it if you like. Do I need to turn the light off? <laughs> what? Wait. Um, is Emmett as quiet as he appears in the videos? That's a good question. Depends. Emmett really is. He's just like the perfect amount of like participation. Like our family, I would say, is a little extra when it comes to things. And Emmett is just in it. He's just a good soul and... Their family is really good. As we've gotten to know the Franzes, we've laughed about this because they choose things very wisely, like what they get involved with, and they become really good at the things that they get involved with. Whereas, like, we, our family's dynamic is, like, we do everything and try everything, and we do it mediocrely. Yeah. Whereas the Franzes, bless, um, do 
to select Jeez. things and do them very well. So that's yeah. Kind of in it. Yeah. Um, when's the most he's ever talked? I feel like there are some talking of Emmett days. Like if you ask him questions, he yeah. talks. He doesn't just talk Ooh. randomly unless he has something that he wants to say. Are shipping products normally, if you're asking about shipping our products, I think the whole USPS system is shipping a little slower than normal. Um, mm -hmm. So like, I think currently my estimated delivery date is around three days, but when I dropped off packages to be shipped from our website at the post office, they said, this is a joke. So I was like, oh, that's a little concerning. So anyways, I think everywhere, everyone did online shopping this year for Christmas because people weren't really down for going out into stores as much. So everything's kind of a little backed up. So just is what it is. All of you guys concerned that I have COVID and blessing <laughs> me. Thank you for the concerns. <laughs> you better um, not have COVID. Oh, no, don't ask <laughs> What? <laughs> Um, Did I start that? Mm -hmm. This is what do I study in college? I am an English major. So, what's your favorite book you read this semester in college? Oh gosh, um, that is difficult because I read I think around over thirty books this semester, oh. and so you're supposed to answer the Bible. Oh, um, the Bible. <laughs> That's uh, I read, well, kind of, out, oh, I read a lot of G.K. Chesterton books that I loved, Orthodoxy and um, Man Alive, and mostly, honestly, his essays. We read a book of his essays, and there were some really good ones on, like, family, um, and he has a really good essay on Job that I enjoyed, so G.K. Chesterton kind of won the semester for me. Um, um, Professor Hoff, saludos desde Brazil. Ah, Hello. Greetings from Missouri. <laughs> there we go. Right. I keep seeing a request for us covering a song called Scars. I have not heard of it, but I have not either. I will look it up on Spotify. Alex Douglas, Christmas time to come enjoy coffee with us. Aw, thank you, so Alex. Nice. Oh my goodness. Guys, we're going so out to sweet. coffee after this. Coffee. Yes, we are. I yeah, actually Alex. am, funny enough. Yeah. I'm picking my friend up from her little college. I'm not picking me. her up. Mm -hmm. Ooh, from. Music again. Do you have any advice for learning to play violin in an apartment? <laughs> yes, they actually do make violin mutes. So, and they're mm. really small. Um, I think they're made out of rubber and they're just black and you just pop it on the bridge in between the strings. It's, if you get it, just order one on Amazon or something. They should be like less than five bucks and that'll mute your sound some. Some people also kind of, I've seen towels kind of stuffed in instruments, but I, I'd say put it putting a small mute on the bridge. Yeah. Um, John says I am keen on seeing y'all perform when love is gone. Mm. From uh, Muppet Christmas Carol. We should look mm. that up. That would be fun. Mm. What are you saying? Write about that us? down, Katie. It's already in my head. Um, <laughs> I will say you're thinking about your poor neighbors uh, with the instruments. And I did live in an apartment for a portion of my life, about two years in Springfield, and I did play the banjo in there. And prayers for my neighbors back in those days. I did get a noise complaint, so I'm really sorry about that. So. Ellen had a roommate that made a banjo practicing closet That's true. for a while, <laughs> and if Ellen had to practice, she'd get sent to the closet. It was like a baby closet, too. Like, could not fit. Um, Zachary, hello from Australia. Hi. You would love to go to Australia. Yes, to so Australia. Hey, Ellen, what about playing Foggy Mountain Breakdown? I'm glad you read that. It needs to happen. Oh, I actually haven't played that in a really long time. So, The Willis Clan, we actually, I'm not sure what is currently happening with them, but they're actually some of our friends. We knew them. The Bluegrass community is kind of small. Well, it is small. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the um, younger bands go to Silver Dollar City in May for Youth and Bluegrass. And so we've met pretty much all of our bluegrass people there. And the I think clan was we bluegrass. ran into them in Ireland too when we were there one time we saw them. And I know um, several of them are doing kind of solo project yeah, stuff. So they're so. still producing music out there. So mm -hmm. you can definitely still find them. They're awesome. A lot of them yeah. just got married, I think. Yeah. Man, married. I just saw one of them a couple months ago. Matt and I went to the station in. Oh. And um, yeah, she was there and her husband was taking photos. Fun. Okay, I'm fascinated by this. Would you be 
Nocta Lucent Studio says, would you be interested in performing next year at the International Birds Aren't Real convention in Bora Bora? Yes, please contact us. <laughs> oh, in, in Bora Bora. <laughs> Only if it's still in Bora Bora though, because that actually sounds- Oh cool. my so word. I would love to go to Bora Bora. Um, math is always funny, no. Um, that was a question. Oh, I was like, I are you reading comments no. right now? Well, or? the question was, math is always funny, question, question? No. Oh, math. Math. Not funny. Oh, maybe what? math? What? <laughs> yes. I agree, no one. <laughs> math is um, funny. Uh, do, 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 do. Who are some girls. of our influences in music? Uh, I know Katie talks about this quite a bit, but Alison Krauss and Union Station is just really hard to like top that as far as like bluegrass quality and and for what we do performing their performances are known and described by like everyone who goes as flawless and a, an amazing experience sounds just like their albums yeah so for us as performers i'm like that's that's a great goal to strive for we are not flawless in our performances and if you guys tune in to our christmas stream on the 20th it's not it's not bad like we actually we had a good show um, I just noticed that we're but not we are not perfect people. Emmett probably was flawless. I yeah, Emmett's awesome. Emmett's the same caliber as all of those people, and then there's us. And yeah, <laughs> but we're trying so hard. <laughs> and Emmett, yeah, he's very encouraging to all of us too to step it up like musically and keep pursuing that next goal. So I'm very thankful for that. We don't know Bela Fleck and Abigail Washburn, but we did see them. Matt got us all tickets to their concert for Christmas like a couple years we ago. We went to a 100% banjo yeah. concert. It was two banjos. Two banjos. Two banjos. Heaven. Oh. <laughs> and it was a tiny, I mean, the room wasn't that small, but it felt very small. Any plans to release DVD download of Branson Show? Um, hi. Hello. Is it Durigo Duke? Oh, yeah. Hey, Durigo. Oh, yeah, I've yeah. never known how to pronounce He's been around your YouTube channel. And our comment sections for a while, yeah. so we appreciate it. Good to see him. you. Yes. Um, we do have, so we streamed our fall Branson show. That was Julianne's last show. We recorded it in August, and that's out on DVD. Or if you're um, in our top tier Patreon, you can actually watch the YouTube link of that. So that's out there. And I don't know if I'm gonna make a DVD of the Christmas one, um, just because by the time it gets all the way through, it's gonna be like March. So maybe I'll have it for next Christmas and release it. We're also going to work on having a vinyl record of our Christmas album out for next year as well. So we tried to do it this year. Yeah. Everyone was so far behind. It was like a 12 week thing. So we wouldn't have even had them in to start shipping out until after Christmas. So that was a bit of a bummer, but next year, that process just things. takes a yeah. while. Um, also, evidently, my eyes sparkle a lot in that. Oh, if you guys thing. watched the stream on Sunday, Katie wore this really sparkly eyeshadow. I ran eyeshadow. out of my regular eyeshadow, and I put on a bunch of sparkles. And anytime she, like, closes her eyes, the, like, the light from the spotlights literally catches her, like, eyelash, and it kind of twinkles. And I texted her, and I was like, your eyes are sparkling. Things I didn't think about, and now it's on DVD. Um, Mike Tyler says, thank you for helping me, keeping me sane throughout this year's lockdown and beyond. Favorite Discovery 2020 by far. Love you guys. Thank oh, you so thank much. Thank you. That's, That's really kind. very kind. We appreciate that. And then Zachary Hatfield says, love what Katie has to say in support of tradition, family, and community. God bless you all. Katie just making us all the money. Mm. Also, just speaking good words. <laughs> Captain. You freshman. Freshman in college, guys. I don't know what you're going to do about it. You got to get back to the OG self. So I will say, so Katie and Julian went live on our Patreon thing. Mm -hmm. And my favorite question they answered was, do we ever squabble was the exact question. <laughs> meaning fight, not meaning like, if I poke you, will you squabble? Maybe Have you looked up thing. the definition of squabble? Somebody look up the definition of squab squabble and get back to squab. <laughs> More coffee. Yeah, well, we don't. We're really. actually, we get along pretty well. I mean, we spend a lot of time together, and especially in a COVID year, we normally have friends outside of each other. <laughs> this year, we've like tried to stay as healthy as possible, and our mm -hmm. social bubble is very small. So you guys are looking at my social bubble right now. and A noisy quarrel about something petty or trivial. Yes, we squabble. Noisy quarrel? Noisy quarrel. 
Hmm. I would say that's fair. Max, it means argue in a small way. I actually really like that definition. Thanks, Max. What? Um, we actually, we do get along really well. We also, we have differences. Sometimes I think a song should be arranged a certain way and Katie has another opinion, but that's the beauty of having groups is usually between all six of us voting. It's like a we dual come up, yeah. just to get it. Well, I wouldn't really call it a squabble either. Like we're yeah. just, it's you have discussion. to talk through things and discussions are important. You can't just ignore it. Thanks for the multiple YouTube spirals. Love the pop covers. Ever consider covering stuff Jen Stevens? Oh, no, not yet. It's a great suggestion, but though. Good suggestion. Thanks, Brian. Thank you. Uh, YouTube spirals. They're either really productive or very unproductive. And I hope all the YouTube Peterson spirals are very productive in your eyes. Sometimes I go on those. If you look at like what's been uploaded recently, it's very entertaining. Mm -hmm. You seem so grounded as a parent of a 12 year old. What did your parents do that kept with you and made you into what you are now? You guys got this. Mom spent and dad spent a lot of time with us. That's I true. I will say, like, we did a ton of family activities. And I mean, mom did homeschool us until I was in the 10th grade, is when Ellen and I went to public school and finished up at high school. But, um, yeah, that's something I've noticed too. Like just talking with my friends and you you begin to learn about other people's backgrounds and stuff. I, I never realized how much time our parents spent and invested in us until I started hearing how little time some of my friends had with their actual families as a whole. And I was like, oh, I, I mean, time is just irreplaceable. And with us moving around in the military so much, lots of times we were the only people we had and so we were hanging out all the time and you have to if you're with a concentrated group of people for that long you have to learn how to get along and so yeah and dad has always been very intentional with all of us I mean for Christmas for several years we would get these things called daddy date cards and he would have us fill out he would give us 10 each and we would write down a place and a time where we would go do something fun with him and so we had those to yeah. use and I mean we were before we played bluegrass besides just singing for fun we would we were building a tree house for like two years one year dad ran with us every day as our pe coach mom read to us every night like it's just time. they also yeah in that consistent time too it wasn't just a season and i will say our parents never like they're really great friends of ours now but i don't think their goal ever was to be a friend as much as to help guide us and to be a parent mm -hmm. and they're not afraid of tough love they're not afraid of saying something even to this day if i say something my mom will be like she'll call me out and my dad will call me out if i mm -hmm. say something so it's not they're not afraid of us disliking them in the moment in order to help invest in who we're going to be We've like there are many of those moments oh yeah they're <laughs> they're willing to say the hard things that we don't want to hear i do remember when we were younger, there was a spatula that had a frowny face on one side and a happy face on the other. And if we were misbehaving, the frowny face would come out and you either run for cover or <laughs> you're going I, to be disaster. So Matt's really yeah. not here, so he can't defend himself. So. I mean, it was mom, so it yeah. never actually hurt. It just hurts your pride no. and your feelings. So Matt literally... Anytime I knew that Matt had done something honorary as a child, Katie and I would be like near the kitchen or something. I just see him run in as a terror <laughs> and he would scramble through the kitchen drawers and grab any sort of like spoon or anything with the handle he could find and run and hide with them. Remember and then when Shana, we hit him in the music room <laughs> and we were like, Matt, that is a terrible idea. He's like, hide all the spoons. <laughs> so he then sure enough, mom comes in angry as a hornet because who knows what Matt did, but she like, <sighs> opens the kitchen drawer to try to find a spoon to whack him with and they're all hidden so now she's even more mad so i remember now she's hearing like, her open that and not <laughs> finding anything and like rummaging and i was like oh, i was like whatever she does find to finally give him a whooping with is going to be <laughs> very entertaining so it was very yeah entertaining. yeah good times matt is a little brother <laughs> and wants some amounts of entertainment <laughs> uh other questions that rolled in josie um well airborne gifted us so thank you airborne oh thank you um lock picking lawyer asked do we take oh. requests love to hear wide open spaces how we take me away Actually, lock picking oh. lawyer has an awesome channel yes yeah it's so cool to have you on here thank, thank you right when we started youtube or something i was messing around with the analytics and i was like who follows us because like some are public 
and it was like the most subscribers I'd ever seen following us. I was like, oh my gosh. Um, Dixie Chicks are awesome. A lot of Ellen and I's first covers just for fun together were Dixie Chicks songs. We did There's Your Trouble, just the banjo and the fiddle and Katie and I singing, and it was a lot of fun. So yeah. great suggestion. Yeah. Thank you, 1972 Marks as well. Um, oh, I am they. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> that Thank you, Colton. <laughs> yes. Um, I don't know if I know Scars by I Am They. Well, well I have a Spotify playlist of requests. We're huge here, fans of so. I Am They. We wow. love them. Yes. Great song. We did. What song was that? King of Love, My Shepherd Is. Yes. I love that song. Um, Back spoon. Memories, The Wooden Spoon. Yes. Um, how do we balance schooling? Oh, no, I lost it. Lost what? Balance, I saw a question and it went oh. away. <laughs> uh, we don't, I mean, I, I don't want to give off the impression that we're very unhealthy people. But in college, and this is what we told Julianne, you can choose two things. There's friends, there's schoolwork, and there's sleep. You can pick two of those things and do them. You can hang out with friends and sleep, or you can hang out with friends and do schoolwork and not sleep. But... It really, you everything in three. life is a choice. Yeah. So but we all chose to not sleep. <laughs> None of us uh, slept in college. The one None thing we slept. all have in common yeah. is we chose not to sleep. Now, um, if you answer this Thank before. you, Alan, by the way. Oh. Thank you. Um, Why didn't she did go Alan on? Go on. Um, that, that's actually a really good question. Um, so I auditioned for American Idol in 2014, and it aired in 2015. And I made it to the top 48. It was a great experience. Katie and Matt came out to Hollywood with me, and they helped me learn dance moves and the group rounds. And I'm still good friends with a lot of people. Actually, Cody Fry was on that season that I auditioned in. Awesome. Seriously, one of the most inspiring musicians you guys will ever encounter. He's awesome. Um, go look up his music. It's not bluegrass by any means, but it's just he's really gifted. So Cody Fry was in that. So really mm -hmm. cool people. Um, so when I got cut, they actually told me that I needed to move to Nashville and ditch the family band image. And that's just not I, a lot of us have had like opportunities to do things solo. And it's just not the same. So I think we all really love being a family group together. And I'm, I don't even, I think the only reason I even made it as far as I did is because I played the banjo and yodeled in my initial audition. There were so many vocalists that were far more talented than I was that got cut earlier. So I, yeah, I, there's just a lot of really great singers out there. And I think our sweet spot that we found is really the family group together, playing music, hanging out. So Ellen did a great job though. It was fun to watch her. And she, I remember one of the last songs you did was Something in the Water by Carrie Underwood. It's a great song. And I was like, yes. My voice totally gave out on that song. <laughs> That's a big song. But I made it through that one round. Mm -hmm. <laughs> also, uh, thank you, Stephen. Uh, thanks, Stephen. Um, and earlier there was a question about Katie's cooking channel, whether any more of those are coming through. Jules is so, not in college, so it needs yes. to happen. For Katie's 30th, we're going to work on a little, a little YouTube. Oh, okay. Gosh gonna work on a lot of little YouTube videos and so I actually have been cooking a ton lately but I haven't had time to document it because we've been so busy that documenting it does take a lot of time so I'm like I can either learn how to do this meal really quick and not put it up or I won't have time to do it and so I've been just not taking videos but I, I she try. needs to I'll it's do awesome it. Uh, okay, a couple more questions. I do want to talk about, too, though, since this is our last little live chat before Christmas, we love Christmas. We've been playing Christmas music literally the entire year. So we started recording our album in February mm -hmm. because we're like, hey, we still remember all the Christmas songs from the show. Let's just knock out the album and be done with it. COVID happened. Studio got shut down and actually did not reopen to us. So we had to change studios redo a lot of the album in August before Jules went to college slash at the beginning of Jules in college. Then we finished the album. Then we started rehearsing for our Brains and Christmas show in October, launched the Christmas show in just, or November. So we've been playing Christmas all year and it is so fun. It's yeah. like everybody knows all the words to these songs. The songs have such good meaning and purpose behind them about truths that we stake our life on with our faith. And so um, actually, tomorrow I'm releasing I Heard the Bells, and Emmett sings it, and it 
is like the most timely and perfect song for this season about God is not dead. He does not sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail. Like these are just like awesome words of encouragement. It's my favorite arrangement yeah. I've ever heard. Usually that's not what I say about what we're doing with each song, but like it's Emmett does a phenomenal job yeah, with it. And it's really, really great. So we love Christmas. Uh Christmas time for us. We love the Christmas Eve service. Like we mentioned, Katie's gonna be a part of some of them at our mm -hmm. church. Um, but we just get to go and then we normally stress wrap presents that night, Christmas Eve, because we procrastinated. Mm. Uh, actually, Julian, are you making a vlog about Christmas or no? Oh, yes, I'm supposed to be doing that. Mm. <laughs> um, I finished all my Christmas shopping and I've just been coasting because I knew I would not have time. Uh, Are you vlogging right now? Jules is vlogging currently. Hey, so. You guys can be in the vlog. Oh, no. <laughs> there they are. Wait, zoom in. Oh, oh <laughs> our chat's going to be in the vlog. Uh, vlog, Ellen just reminded me that I'm supposed to be vlogging. So <laughs> yeah. stay three about Christmas about who's bought their presents yet or not. Um, we have a vlog channel called The Peterson Family, so you guys can tune into that. Um, then Christmas morning, we love having breakfast together, and then we open the stockings. They're the only thing we can open without the parents being present. Mm -hmm. And we all take turns individually, one by one, opening presents. It's not like a big free-for-all. We like savoring the moment and like the thoughtfulness that went behind the gift. So our family is yeah. big into like the reason behind the present. A lot of that started with Julianne because she's always been a really good gift giver. I mean, I don't know I how where you're going. This. <laughs> no, but she literally stepped up the game. I remember we used to like just give each other presents without a ton of thought behind it. And then Julianne, when she was like seven, started giving us like very well thought out, like personalized Hand gifts and made. stuff. And we were like, yeah. this took you weeks. It was like a handwritten book and stuff. Yeah. And so we all had to up our game. We're like, okay. Cause you can't give a scarf to someone that hands you a handwritten book. Yeah. Like that's just not acceptable. So Joel's raise the bar yeah. and it's never so gone back down. We do that. And then normally we hang out with all the grannies and we play the trivia game with our uncle Ron mm -hmm. who makes it. But this year we're just keeping our Christmas really small. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know what we're gonna do in the afternoon, but then we have a big old Christmas dinner together and we should call the call all of the people. We, we need to go like to outside our grandma's assisted living doors and carol and and tell them that we're doing it. <laughs> yeah, <and> tell <laughs> them. <laughs> um I know we missed uh thingies. Okay. Yeah, we did. Um I think it was Oh, it's as far as it'll let me go. Oh yeah. shoot, we talked too long. Yeah. Uh good choice, Shocker. Ellen from <laughs> B Hill, thank you. If you weren't playing together, what would each of you be doing? So before Bluegrass, I really did use my chemistry degree in a breast cancer research lab in Oklahoma City. Um, did not love it. So I know what I would not be doing, um, which is using my chemistry degree from my lovely college. God bless all you dear professors, but I would not be doing that. I'd probably be using Spanish in some way, like, Katie's a great teacher. I, I like, I could teach, I would probably still teach online music lessons and then maybe some in person depending on where I lived, but I might have just gone on the mission field. I really enjoy the Nicaragua thing. And I mean, the one thing our family all does know is we have to do something with a big purpose. Um, and so whether it's the band or whatever, like the things we're involved in, with, uh, that's just kind of what drives us. And I will so, say a local company I really love is um, the Bass Pro Shops, Johnny Morris, mm -hmm. um, like Big Cedar Lodge. Mm -hmm. All of those properties are awesome. And I think to work for a company, I'd really have to think it was high quality and they were great at what they did. And um, I love Johnny Morris and everything he does with those places. So yeah, he's been very kind to us. Yeah. A lot of our video shoots are like at his property. Yes. He's that awesome. and Weddings at the Homestead mm -hmm. is an awesome yes. property they let us use. Um, then yesterday we were back at Johnny Morris. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Back at Johnny Morris. Um, Caleb says, "Is bluegrass actually your favorite genre? How would you describe the qualities in bluegrass that distinguish it from country, folk, etc.?" Um, huh. Yeah, I would say the instruments really determine a lot of what people say bluegrass is. Um, there's a very limited amount of instruments that can qualify. The minute you start introducing drums or piano or 
And as far as those styles go, because they're all kind of related, you know, country folk, bluegrass, acoustic, the guitar playing pattern is a huge determining factor. Like you hear how the guitar player is playing and you'll probably know what genre it is. So our band is very guitar driven. Like Mm -hmm. Matt seriously is a huge backbone of everything that we do and keeping us together. He's always been a good rhythm player. Yeah. Like he decided to, when a lot of people would want to learn a bunch of fancy solos and stuff at first while they're learning, Matt just focused on rhythm for years. And it's awesome. It's, I mean, it allows us all to do what we need to do. And he also now has yeah, and solos he's too. Getting but really good at yeah, picking, he did so. the foundation first, which was great. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe oh. a couple more here. Shh, 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 shh. I don't know if there's. Um, Mr. Vistagan video. Say something in Spanish. Hola, como estas? What? What about reloading your trolley, loading Primal Pester parts from Blubbers? Mm, thank you. Okay, guys, thank you so much yes. for tuning in to this chat. Uh, shout out to all the patrons that I saw tuning in. We love you guys. And you've mm-hmm. been coming to our shows, Adam. Pinzo was at a lot of shows this week, and Martin he's Harley. someone. Yeah, Martin Harley drove from Alaska to see our family. Like, Unreal. literally drove. <laughs> um, I need to post that picture because that's really fun. Oh, yeah. um, Chance Rogers drove yes. so far. We to had see another us. patron, that other guy at the show yesterday. Um, oh, from was it Minnesota? It wasn't Minnesota. It was Michigan, Michigan? or something. Michigan, Michigan, yeah. yeah, but he had posted on our Patreon page earlier this morning because oh. Chance said, great live show. And then he said, yeah, I was there too. I was like, oh. oh. Huh. So, yeah. yeah. You guys have been coming to see us in Branson, Missouri, and it's so fun. So mm-hmm. thank you, guys. Uh, we'll see you Christmas show this Sunday. I'll put a link somewhere yes. in this. <laughs> you can buy tickets. Uh, but we're really excited to share the songs with you, and I hope you enjoy it. And don't forget... I'm posting I Heard the Bells tomorrow on our YouTube channel, so stay tuned for that. And the outro is Aaron's fault. That's all I will say about that. Julian Spam is Aaron. Spam, Spam Aaron. Spam Aaron. Spam Aaron. Spam Aaron. Spam Aaron. Spam Aaron. Spam. <laughs>